This is your daughter, Elaine. Yes. Will you please show the jury? Mrs. Petty, did you prepare a statement that you can share with the jury today? Yes. Okay. Could you read it for us, please? Okay. On February 14th, 2018, my heart stopped beating. <laughs> Our fourth and youngest child, Elena Petty, was taken back home to live with our Heavenly Father. Elena was born in Seattle, Washington, in the Seattle, Washington area on August 22nd, 2003. She was the cutest little baby and was different from her older sister and the fact that she had brown hair and beautiful dark brown eyes. Elena was definitely a mama's girl. She would always cling to me as a baby. My family members would say she looked like a little monkey because she always had her arms around my neck and she would grab onto my hair with both of her little hands. I never reminded it though because she was my little buddy. Elena loved doing things with me. She started cooking with me in the kitchen at about three years old. She loved helping me, and even when she was a teenager, she would walk through the kitchen and stop at the stove to stir whatever I was making for dinner. I remember one time when Elena was about 12 years old, I was cutting something up for dinner and I accidentally cut my finger. I must have said ouch or something because Elena asked if I was okay. And then she came over, got a band-aid out, and fixed my finger for me. She was very sweet in that way and was always willing to help someone in need, especially her clumsy mom. Elena had a lot of wonderful friends and loved doing things with them. One of her favorite things to do was stay at home and be with her family. She was kind of a homebody. My husband traveled a lot when our kids were little, and it took a few years for Elena to warm up to her dad. When she was about three years old, she started loving being with her dad and thought he was the funniest guy around. When Elena was little, I remember that she loved her big brother, Ian. There's eight years difference between them, but they would lay together on the floor and watch a TV show together. It was very sweet seeing how they were together. Elena also loved her big sister, Megan. Elena wanted to do everything her big sister did, including wearing her clothes, which could be a source of contention sometimes. Megan told Elena that if she would ask before she took her clothes, she would be okay with sharing them. Elena always made sure to ask Megan before she borrowed anything again. <clears throat> she looked up to Megan and tried to respect her wishes. Megan is five years older than Elena, and as they got older, they would watch the same TV shows and snuggle on the couch together. I love how much they actually liked each other and wanted to spend time together. Patrick is Elena's second big brother and is about three years older than her. They had a rocky relationship for quite a while. Patrick, being the awesome big brother that he was, also enjoyed teasing Elena a little more than he probably should have. Elena was a bit feisty at times and didn't always respond to the teasing in the most appropriate ways. Patrick could definitely push her buttons. I remember one afternoon when Elena was about 12 or 13 years old, she and Patrick had just come home from school and she was telling me about something that had happened that day. Patrick made a comment and was teasing her again. Elena just looked at Patrick, rolled her eyes, and said, Ha ha, very funny. I was completely shocked and floored at her reaction. 
I told her that I was proud of her for not getting mad at Patrick and that she reacted in the perfect way to his comment. That was the day their relationship changed. They actually started to become friends. I know that Elena looked up to Patrick when she was in the eighth grade and choosing her high school courses. She wanted to sign up for JROTC just like Patrick had. I was really surprised at that because she had never expressed interest in anything like that at all. JROTC was probably one of her favorite classes in her short time at high school. She made a lot of great friends and thoroughly enjoyed all the extracurricular activities associated with that class. Elena was also involved with our church. We are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As a church, we are encouraged to do service for our neighbors in the community. After Hurricane Irma, many members of our church went to Everglade City to help clean up their homes that had been filled with mud and debris. Elena went with her dad one weekend to help and loved being able to serve others and spend time with her friends. Elena was a really good and loving person. She loved her friends, she loved her family, and most importantly, she loved God. I am heartbroken that I won't be able to watch her become the amazing young woman she was turning into. But in my grief, I know that Elena is with our Heavenly Father right now, and I know that I will see her again in the next life because we are an eternal family. Thank you for taking time to listen to a grieving mother. Thank you, Mrs. Petty. Good afternoon, Megan. Good afternoon. Megan, are you the sister of Elaine Petty? I am. And did you prepare a statement for I the did. court today? I did. Can you please read it to us? Yes. My name is Megan Petty. I'm Elena Petty's older sister, and she was murdered in classroom 1216 on February 14, 2018. Today, I will attempt to share with the court at least a small portion of how my family has been impacted by her murder. But as a disclaimer, I don't think the words exist to adequately describe the depth of pain, confusion, and anger that we deal with every single day. Elena was 14 years old when she died. She went to school that day in her uniform for JROTC, which was a school program she loved. She was in her final class of the day when she died. I'd like to talk a little bit about who she was. I am five years her senior, but in many ways, she was more grown up than I, sorry, I feel I ever will be. She's very smart extremely confident, and she shined with integrity, which is a challenge, especially at that age. She was so generous and always willing to help out a friend, an outcast, or whoever she saw that was in need. I would have loved to see her grow up because I know that she would have been a blessing to the world. What I, look, I most looked up to her for was her heart, she loves her friends and her family so much, and she expressed it in a way beyond her years, as she would tell you exactly how she felt about what you were doing and whether she thought it was wrong or right, and somehow found the words at the tender age of 14 to do it in a way that showed she loved you and really cared about your choices because they would affect your future. I aspire to have that much pure love for others and the confidence to stick up for my beliefs no matter what someday 
to be just like her. I try my hardest, but her loss makes me feel empty. And like truly loving anyone ever again is impossible. She was an angel on earth and she should still be here. And this world has been robbed of a beautiful soul. 14 is too young to die. It causes me pain to know that she never got a chance to even truly live. She never got her braces off. She never had her first kiss. It causes me pain to know that she never went on a first date or felt the nerves and excitement associated with that uncharted territory. And it hurts me to know that she never got asked to the prom. It causes me pain to know that she never got to fall in love. She never got to experience heartbreak and come out stronger and wiser. It causes me pain to know that she'll never go, go get her driver's license. She'll never feel the satisfaction of getting her first paycheck at a job. She didn't get to pick what college she wanted to attend or feel the anticipation of waiting for that acceptance or rejection letter. It causes me pain to know that she'll never get married or be able to have kids of her own. And she probably hadn't even begun to think about those things because she was supposed to have a lifetime to figure that out. On Christmas in 2017, two short months before her murder, we found out that my sister-in-law was pregnant. Elena was so excited to be an aunt, and it hurts our whole family to know that she never got to meet my nephew. She didn't even get to see an ultrasound. She missed his birth, and she's missed the birth of my second nephew. They're now two and four, and someday we're going to have to explain to them why they have two aunts, but I'm the only one here. Elena's death has left a hole in our family that was created before they were born, and this will affect us all forever, even if some of us weren't alive to feel the initial loss. How her death has impacted myself or our family is an unfair question. How am I supposed to explain that? It affects us all constantly, and in a way, I don't even notice as I struggle to survive every day since February 14th. My parents are now empty nesters. They were supposed to have more years with the child at home, and they didn't get that. As much as they love myself and my, my two brothers, that aching void can't be filled by us. Instead of Elena getting her diploma, smiling for a picture, and feeling accomplished, my parents walked across the stage to get a box with an empty cap and an empty gown and an honorary degree that she should have had the opportunity to earn herself. They lost their baby, and no one and nothing can replace a child. I can't fix that pain for them, and it would be equivalent to insanity to even try and it's hard to see them suffer and know that I can't fix it. I've always considered myself to be a strong person, but I quickly found out that this was not the case. No amount of strength can prepare you for hours of waiting and worrying. Only seem to, your to see your parents come home with one of your siblings, but not the other one. They never deserve to be put in that situation, and both Patrick and Elena deserve to walk back home through the door of our house that night. The fact that they did not come home together has affected me profoundly. I spent that time, I waited at home praying she was just injured. Even if she was really hurt, she would still be alive. I lowered my expectations to the lowest that I could handle in that moment and it still wasn't enough. To say I was shattered would be an understatement. And the initial pain of finding out she was dead has been nothing compared to the pain of living without her. I keep waiting for her to walk through the door, even though we've moved houses, even though it's been four years, even though part of me knows she's not coming back, although the rest of me can't handle admitting that yet. I am still holding out the hope that this is all a nightmare or some horrible joke, that I'll wake up and she's back in our arms safe and sound, and this will all fade away instead of the reality of her death creeping up on me more and more each day. Her absence screams at me, 
Even when I'm focused on other things, knowing she is dead looms in the back of my mind at all times and in all places and with all people. The fact that she's dead is something that my mind can briefly acknowledge, but I will never understand why she is dead, so I try to just shut it out. Because I cannot emotionally comprehend that she has gone completely from this world. Four years has not been long enough. Forty years will not be long enough. And four hundred years would not be long enough. All I have left of her are pictures, videos, and texts. I reread them, and every time I do, I feel her presence and the life behind them disappear a little more. I should be making new memories with her not begging her friends for stories about the things she did or said in the past. Even if she had gone to Mars, she'd be closer than she is now. I have a really hard time thinking about her. She's my sister, and thinking of a family member that I love hurts me. I unconsciously avoid it. I've dreamed of her twice in four years, and I didn't see her face in those dreams because my brain, even while asleep, knew that I'd be in too much pain. I can't hear her voice when I think of her anymore. I don't remember what it felt like to hug her, play with her, or even fight with her. I look at pictures of us together, and it feels like the two people in those photos are strangers. I know that as my life continues on, I'll remember her less and less instead of creating more memories with her and becoming closer. She used to sit on me when I laid on the couch trying to crush me, even though she was too skinny to make it even hard for me to breathe. I remember how warm I would get with her sitting on me, and I used to tell her that she was a great heated blanket. She was alive, warm, and present. Every time I think of her, I shouldn't have to cry and call out to this guy hoping for evil even a twinkle of confirmation that she still exists out there somewhere thank you thank you Ms. <laughs>